When working with Enigma, you will most likely also work with dates or you will have to work with dates because dates can be really confusing. And in this video, you will learn how you can calculate the difference between two dates to know like the days in between or even the days, the hours, the minutes and the seconds. So we will look at it with an example and I will explain you all the functions that you will need and also how to set it up. Hey, my name is Emmanuel and I'm the founder of Techflow AI. And in this video, you will learn how you can calculate differences between two dates and how you can work with dates in Antigma. So I've prepared this sample scenario over here. We have date number one, which is the 8th of September. And we have date number two, which is the 9th of April. And we want to get the difference between these two dates. Now, you could theoretically do date one minus day two. But when I run this once, we will see that, okay, our date gets parsed and Enigma understands that it's a date. Same for the second one. But when we see the difference, the time difference, it's just empty. Why is that? Because it understands this as a text string. And for a text string, you can't make a calculation. So you can't say date one minus day two. We have to parse the date first. So we use the parse date function. And as always, if you hover over a function, you can see a description of it. So the parse date basically transforms this into an actual date. And then you can do more things with it. So we put it in both variables over here and save. And now if we run it once again, we see it looks still exactly the same. But the output of this function is actually now a time. So that is milliseconds. That's basically the time difference between these two dates in milliseconds. Now going to the next step, what is the time difference between these two dates in seconds? Now, we have our dates and we want to format them into seconds and therefore we need the format date function and as the value for the format we use the uppercase x which means seconds and you could also use the lowercase x which is milliseconds and that will be the same output like if you calculate the difference right away so if i run this now we will see this one is in milliseconds and this one is in seconds. Now with the seconds, we can easily calculate everything. We could also do it with milliseconds. Then we just have to divide it by 1000 and then we get the actual seconds. Now the next would be to calculate the days. So we want to know how many days are between those two dates. So there's this handy function where we have the round function. We have date one minus day two. Then we divide it by 1000. We divide by 60. We divide it by 60 again. And we divide it by 24. Why is that? Because we have 24 hours a day. We have 60 minutes an hour. We have 60 seconds a minute. And we have 1000 milliseconds a second. And since the output of that one over here is milliseconds, this one actually, it's milliseconds. We have to divide by 1000 to get this value here, which is seconds. Then we divide it by 60 to get the minutes. Then we divide it by 60 again to get the hours. And then we divide it by 24 to get the actual amount of days. So the output is 152, as you can see here. So the difference, the seconds a day is 150. Let's see if that's actually accurate. If we copy that number in seconds and copy it, I already did that on Google and see, okay, these amount of seconds are actually 152 days so that is correct now if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and you will receive a lot more useful tutorials about in and automation in general now let's continue with some great interesting stuff and that is how to do the same for hours minutes and seconds so I've already prepared this here and this small set. Of course, it is now a different one. So we have the date difference, which is this variable over here. Let me update that quickly. All right. So now we want to get hours, minutes and seconds split up. I will run it once to show you the output and then I'll explain it. So the output is 3656 hours, 47 minutes and 45 seconds. So that is the time difference between these two dates in hours, minutes and seconds. And how it works is this function. So we divide it first by 3,600 
and then we get the hours and we use the flow function to round it down to the full hour because we don't want like 3600.57 hours. That doesn't make sense. So we use divided by 3600 and then for the minutes we have the flow function as well. We use the value that we had before this same variable. Then we use modulus. I hope I pronounced this correctly. Modulus 3600, which means it divided by 3600 and then give back the rest and then divide that value by 60 because that gives us the minutes. And then it will do the same. So it will use modulus 3600, which gives the rest of the first function of the hours. Then again, modulus 60, which gives the rest of the minutes. And that is the second. So now running that again, it is 3656 hours, 47 minutes and 45 seconds. Now to make that even a little bit more complicated, we can go in here and get the actual dates out of it. So I'll have to update that again quickly. The main difference here is that we divide it by 86,400 because 86,400 is how many seconds one day has. So we divide our time difference in seconds by 86,400 and then we use the flow function to round it down to the full number because that is the amount of days we're looking for. Then we're using the modules function again to get the rest of it and divide by 3600 like we did before to get the hours. And then we use the modules two times again with the 86,400 to get the days, then 3600 to get the hours and then divide by 60 to have it in minutes. And then last but not least, we do the same with 86,400, 3600 and modulus 60 to get the rest, which are our seconds. And when I run this once now, you will see I'll get the output of 152 days, 8 hours, 47 minutes and 45 seconds. And that is exactly what the time difference is between these two dates. And you can use that however you want to, however you need it. If you want to say, okay, time difference needs to be exactly 30 days and 50 seconds, then you can set up a filter that the days and the seconds should be above that value or like the total seconds should be above that value or whatever. Or you can save it into a custom field and use that further. I hope that video was helpful for you because I know times are quite hard to grasp. I will provide more videos about times, working with times and timestamps and working with different time zones in the future. So like and subscribe so you don't miss out the new videos. Now, if you thought like these integument functions that I've used here, they look cool, but I have no idea how they work. Then I suggest to look into the Integmat functions cheat sheet where I have over 45 pages of Integmat functions explained. You can download it. It's a PDF. It's fully searchable. You can just type whatever keyword you want and it will search through the whole PDF and guide you directly to the correct place. And you will have copy and paste ready functions in there with an explanation, some examples that you can use inside of your scenarios because in take mode functions are super helpful. They provide a lot of value like you can see here and they enhance your automations without using any kind of operation. Operation costs money and we want to save some operations by using integument functions. And yeah, they are super helpful. So you can see that there are a lot more here in these tabs and they're all explained inside of the integument functions cheat sheet. And you can get it now for a very cheap price. Just check out the link in the description below the video and you will find more about it. Thanks for watching.